Good morning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 307 RPG Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Nolan. Nolan, how are things? Haven't chatted with you for a few days. What's exciting? What is going on with you? Uh, you know, I will say that I got a very fun and exciting weekend of uh, Zack Snyder uh, Justice League. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. I, I, as a recommendation, I suggest doing it. Uh, it was so good. And I had also had not seen the ultimate edition of Batman versus Superman. And just the extra stuff that they added in that as well helped that movie a lot. Uh, so we, me and the boys watched Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and then yesterday watched Justice League this weekend. I couldn't, be, cool. yeah, I couldn't be more happy and more sad at the same time just knowing what could have been. I mean, it was just, yeah, I can see why a lot of the actors were upset with the, uh, the original cut of what came out. And, and as a huge Superman fanboy, uh, it was so good. It was so good. So if you get a chance, do it. Uh, I will defend it, even if it's terrible. But I thought it was great. They added so much more context to everything. Uh, minor characters got major roles, and it was just good. It was not. It was. It's a completely different movie. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I wonder. So we here in Sheridan, uh, we don't. Well, I shouldn't say we don't. We have a lot of rich people that area and, and and i'm talking mostly for for cam who's our special guest so you can understand the context here one of the producers from batman versus superman lives here in sheridan uh his name is bruce moriarty and i wonder nolan if if now <clears throat> when bruce comes into the dealership if you should ask him now that you've seen some of the additional stuff from batman versus superman if he would have a different perspective of it because i know before he was like yeah some projects you just do for the money yeah, he uh, his resume as well as Forrest Gump, and so <laughs> he's he's been yeah. on some big stuff, and yeah. And I guess he's off like in Europe right now on another project. Yeah, uh, I, I'm curious about it. I want, I do, I want to tell him how much I enjoyed the uh, the Snyder cut, and and I suppose if uh, I suppose it, it, if he had the benefit of seventy million dollars and redoing every movie ever done and going back and do it, I'm sure it'd be better the second time around. Um, but this one here was just. I don't know. I got lost in the story of why and what happened. And again, it was just, it was great to see. So it's a nice way to spend four hours. Uh, they did a very nice job of, they broke it up into six parts. So it's kind of like six acts. So I think they're you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long, kind of breaking up little parts of the story. So you don't have to take it all in one sitting. So if you're afraid of sitting down to watch it because, oh my gosh, who's got four hours. Uh, but it goes by really quick and I got hooked pretty easily. So Anyway, cool, that, cool. That, that was my weekend. Well, for me, I was able to pick up a couple of packs of Time Spiral. This is like one of the exciting things that happened for me this weekend. Uh, so Time Spiral Remastered just came out for Magic the Gathering. It was released on Friday. I stopped into our local shop, the Sports Alley, chatted with Mike for a little bit, the owner, and picked up a, a couple of packs. And I was so happy when I opened a Tarmogoyf. Now, it makes no sense that I'm happy about this because I have a play set of Tarmogoyfs, right? I should not be happy about this, but as much Modern Masters as I bought or earned having worked at Grand Prix Las Vegas in 2015, and I think I left there with a case of Modern Masters, I should have opened a Goyf by now, but I hadn't. So when I opened this one, it's a different border. It's the original artwork, but like a different, like more modern border. Um, I was thrilled. I was like, holy shit, I got a Goyf. Even though, like, before, Goyf was, like, 150 bucks, and now it's 25 which pisses me off. But whatever. I was still excited. It's silly, I know, but hey. I think I pulled one on my uh, one of my first Modern Masters reprints. So Yeah, uh, shut up. I, I'm just letting you know that I only have one. So if I get back into Magic, I'm sure I'll need Goyf for something. So Well, there you go. I'll just hang on to it until you get back into Magic. <laughs> I'll wait till it's $15, so... So the other thing I wanted to, yeah, exactly. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, I had an opportunity, and I, and I say I was graced with this opportunity yesterday. Uh, and before I go too far, I want to introduce our guest, uh, Cameron Day. Cameron is here to talk about his project, Comets and Cockpits. Comets and Cockpits. Wow, that is a mouthful. Uh, coming to <laughs> Kickstarter soon. Cam, how are you doing? Good, and yourself? I'm, I'm doing quite well. We're really excited to have you here to talk about your project. Glad to be here. Good, good. And so I wanted to introduce you because I wanted to include you in the conversation here. Um, so yesterday I was asked to DM at a birthday party for a young man. Um, his, his father was the musical director for Into the Woods that I was a part of uh, before getting COVID. And his name, his father's name is Ryan. And Ryan had reached out to me and said, hey, Patrick, I know you play D&D. Would you be willing to come over to my house on, on my son's birthday and 
DM a game. Now, these are kids who are aged 10 to 12. And Cam, you're a history teacher now. You're a high school history teacher, but you get the idea of trying to wrangle a bunch of kids, especially yes. when they're yes. suddenly very excited, right? <laughs> so Ryan told me we had two hours to play. And I was, I'm like, okay, well, we can do something in two hours. There's no problem. Obviously, I'm not going to pull out any of the books or anything like with adventures and stuff because you're just not going to have enough time in two hours, especially with five kids ages 10 to 12. So I thought, okay, we're going to do something simple. It'll be, you know, they're walking outside of Waterdeep. A farmer comes up to him. Goblins have kidnapped our kids. Please help us. That kind of thing. And so that was the setup, right? During that two-hour time period, we were able to include lock, picking locks, failing to disable traps, um, having to do a little bit of role-playing, and, of course, the big thing that the kids were excited about, combat. So they had a situation where they fought like a bunch of goblins and you throw eight goblins at a group of five level two characters, they're still going to mow through. Them. It might take a little time, but they're going to get through them. And then at the end, I pulled, you know, some magic knowledge here and figured they're going to fight this legendary creature called Granko Mob Boss, which if you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, you know that this is a black red goblin. So I thought, OK, we're going to fight Granko Mob Boss. Granko is going to be a legendary creature. He's going to have three legendary reactions that he can use, but he can only use them every other turn. And it was like uh, once he had a counter spell, he had a legendary kick that did like four points of damage. And if you failed a dexterity saving throw, you were not prone. And um, I forget what the other one was because I never used it. But we were playing this, you know, throughout this encounter. And it, I, I deliberately set it up so where the birthday boy got the killing blow. And like it was really that that and you see it sometimes in Critical World, that exultation when they beat the final boss, all the kids are standing up, jumping up and down, arms in the air. And I got a text from his dad afterwards saying, It's now three hours since the game, and these kids are still talking about it. So cool. I thought that was really cool. I was wondering, have either of you ever had a chance to do that? Go ahead, Cameron. Yeah, uh I so I run a couple games a week, and for a while, uh, when I was uh, before I engage, I got engaged to my fiance. We were dating. Um, she had never really been big into gaming at all. Um, you know, she was she was a track kid in high school. You know, her brothers and in college, more her brothers were more of the nerdy ones, and she had never really been into. Even though she was into anime, and I was like, it's still cast, but whatever. Um, semantics and so i finally convinced her i was like hey i'm gonna put together a game of some of my friends and your brother and we'll play and so we did a curse of strat loose curse of strat it was more of a plane hopping curse of strat uh and she was a tabaxi ranger i think is what she wanted to do so we did that campaign i think she was starting to get more and more comfortable and then i we did an, our next campaign which was a midgard uh, set so if none of you guys have ever done the kobold press midgard fantastic set. um and we jumped around in that a little bit and she had a she did a changeling druid that and then we kind of had a little break game in the middle where we played supers and sorcery which was our first book which is our super heroic fantasy setting and she made in it there's this race called the clory folk which are like plant people which were kind of our our ode to swamp thing and so she played a Redwood. So she's this huge barbarian. She took the Path of Growth from Super and Sorcerer, which is our Hulk-inspired subclass. And that is when, like, I first saw her really having fun. Like, she'd enjoyed the other games. But, like, just going completely ham as this grouchy old tree man who just wanted to live on his farm and be left alone. And then gets dragged back from retirement. He's like, oh, god dang it. It's, like, grumbling the entire time. And she had a blast. And I think that was definitely the moment when I was, like... That is, kind of like I I was very happy. They had to fight like a Draco Lich, and it was it was just a good. So I think that that's probably my. That's awesome, Nolan. How about you? Have you been able to get your kids at all interested? Have you done a little bit of playing around with them? You know, every now and then we'll have little things, but we haven't actually checked dice. Um, and I think the same thing there is, you know, getting your spouse involved and and getting them a little bit of hook in it, so they can kind of understand the madness we go through as fans of this. Um, <laughs> I know that there's a lot of people that I've gotten into, okay, like, it's time for me to play. I'm like, well, why is now the time? It's like, because every time you have something happen in a game, 
you come back and you say, oh, and then I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this. And it's like, you weren't ever like, you know, your character Bartholomew was here and they were with this group. They're like, you like live that shit. And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, it's no different than, you know, being in a dream or, you know, telling a story. Like I had the experience. I was there. It was fictional, but it was in my brain. It's like, I'm all for signing up for the matrix because this is basically what I get to do all the time. So I think, you know, when you have a good DM, like we've got uh, with Patrick, um, I, I think that's kind of been, I've been on the other side of it where I've had those moments of like, I still remember moments and usually they're not the glorious, like killing the mob boss. It's, you know, uh, Patrick running into a room, trying to turn an undead, uh, with a cleric and accidentally waking up the entire crypt of undead and getting himself killed or, <laughs> <it's a habit. laughs> but, you know, as, as zombies, you know, floating across a river and a zombie reaches up and tries to grab one of the character's hands and thinking that it was the best idea to be on a log raft and swing a sword. And, uh, I think he chopped the rope and tried to drown again, uh, Patrick's cleric. Um, <laughs> so it's just those moments of like, it's just the bad things are like, I mean, for us are just like, I can't believe, like, how do we live? I mean, it's like, we're yeah. like, we're like toddlers. Like all the time my kids run into stuff. I'm like, how are you not more broken? Like you're so resilient. And and that's usually what our D and D campaigns are like. Remember that time that we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We deserve remember that time. Remember that time Sheree decided she was going to be a hag for the betterment of the party. Yeah. Just making a deal with a hag for the sake of, well, maybe she's got information. I'm like, I don't think you go. I think the joke was you don't go full hag. Like, you know, that's just one of those. So, no, I, it, I think getting it, the kids into it is fantastic. You'll have kids hooked for life. And, uh, of course, you'll you'll get calls now all the time for once yeah, another well, one shot. Right. I guess now I'll just become the professional DM for birthday parties. There you go. Clowns make good money. That's you, right. You can at least charge more than a clown because there's way more work that goes yeah. into that. You know, the cool thing is, is like I was just going to show up, right? And And my wife is like, no, you're not. She's like, dude, you're a theater nerd. Why the hell would you just show up? You get downstairs and you get dressed up right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I went down here. I came down to my room. I grabbed, I was like, well, the only thing I can have that, that really is going to, you know, look good is like, so I grabbed my kilt, I grabbed my pirate shirt. I threw it all together. And when I showed up at the house, I was like, man, I, I, whatever. And both Ryan and his wife were like, oh my God, you look amazing. That's and awesome. the kids just totally ate it up. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And you know what? I, I would absolutely recommend to anybody listening to this, to both of you, if you get a chance to DM for a bunch of 12-year-olds for a birthday party and you just have that allotment of two hours or whatever, do it. Because all the way home, which was only like you know a half a mile, I was grinning ear to ear because their excitement and their laughter and their joy was so infectious that it, it was cool. So I, yeah. I recommend you guys do it. That's why we play. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. So let's jump into the news so we can spend some time talking to Cam about his project. So let's kick it off with some Dungeons and Dragons news. Gando Keep Mysteries is out in the wild. Uh, before I turn it over to Nolan, I, when I got home from uh, DMing that adventure, I came home to this waiting on my couch. I did not uh. order this. My brother <laughs> went and picked it up and dropped it off. He's like, you have to have this book. I'm like, why? And he goes, you need to look at the back. So have either of you grabbed the, the this copy of the I haven't book? Haven't seen yet? it. I I have the regular. Unfortunately, I am a poor first year teacher and do not have the monies for the special <laughs> edition. But I do have the regular one. <laughs> so we are very fortunate that our local game store charges the same price. So it, it's kind of nice. So the back of this has the oh, nice. and no one you know how I feel about beholders. I know. <laughs> So I saw this and I about came unglued. Now this is, I wasn't going to buy Candle Keep Mysteries because I knew no one was going to get it on D&D Beyond. He was going to share it with me and I was going to run it that way. But you know what? Just like we had said originally when we saw the artwork for this, it looks like an ancient tome that's going to sit on your bookshelf, right? This is a really nice book. Now the one thing they did differently with this that they've done with like Morden Canaan's and Volos is it doesn't have that like faux feel to it, that, that almost felt like feel to it. This is more like the standard D&D books that we have. Um, Still, absolutely gorgeous book. Uh, Dom, thank you so much. I love this edition of the book. It will go up on the shelf with the other ones that I have. All right, Nolan, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can tell us what you've looked at at Candlekeep Mysteries. You know, I haven't delved too deep into it just because I'm hoping to play it. Um, the big thing that I took away from just kind of looking at it was how you use the adventure. And I think the, the best thing about what it did for me was just kind of start the wheels turning for... Uh, 
planning them into a game. Uh, so the, the kind of the idea behind it and what they have in the book is the Candlekeep Mysteries table summarizes the adventure in this anthology. Each adventure is designed for four to six characters of a particular level, but you can adjust it for larger, smaller groups, obviously. Characters for higher level or lower, just depending on what you need to do. Swap some AC, swap some DCs, add an extra monster, whatever you need to do. Each adventure in this anthology embraces one of the following narrative concepts. The characters discover a book in a library that contains a mystery. Go, getting to the bottom of this mystery requires embarking on an adventure. And the other idea is the characters come to Candlekeep on a quest for information, perhaps to solve a crisis elsewhere in the world. During their research, they uncover a book uh, and the mystery it contains, which leads to adventure. So the idea behind these books is there are 16 books. Uh, each one is designed with a level in mind. Uh, they give you a brief description on it, and then that's kind of what it is. So my thought, and we were talking about it, you know, just kind of as a, as a group of... I think that needs to be treasure more often, right? Uh, you you loot the bandit's cave or whatever, and there's, you know, oh, there's the gold, there's the gem, there's the fancy art that they stole and blah, blah, blah. And then instead of saying, okay, we'll go back and get our bounty or whatever, like, you know, across his desk, there's this book and there's all these notes and these details and he was working on something. And, and this is, you know, all this money was going to fund a project or something like that. And you happen to pick up, you know, uh, Book of the Raven. Uh, and it's a level three adventure. Uh, description is a treasure map tucked inside a book beckons adventures to a remote hilltop shallot occupied by a secret society that shuns visitors. And so, you know, you can, you could play all of these very much by, each book leads to another book. You find it as treasure. Um, we also talked about, uh, I think it'd also be fun just to be, I'm from Candlekeep. I'm I'm the nerdy librarian that's checking in books or whatever. And, you know, there's a book that's been missing for, you know, three days or whatever, you know, or, and it's time to go collect or, you know, just be this really big group of librarians that incidentally become like some super high powerful adventurers trying to collect overdue books or something like that. So, um Anyway, I, I didn't read too much into the adventures uh, just because I really want to play them. Um, but I, I, I like this idea. This is a great way to just fill in those gaps of if your campaign's not quite ready yet to move on to the next level. You feel like your team needs more time learning abilities because um, some of them are hard. You know, jumping from, you know, eight to ninth level is kind of a huge step, especially if you're starting, you know, above the first five levels. That's not a lot of time to get used to abilities or features. And we see it a lot in our games where, People aren't using abilities correctly or they forget they have them because they didn't grow up with them. Uh, so this will buy you some more time. Uh, it, it looks cool. The map of Candlekeep is huge. It is not the Candlekeep I saw uh, in Baldur's Gate 1 when I played that game. So that got me pretty excited about it. Uh, I don't know. It looks like a good book. I'm curious to play the adventure as soon as we actually knock some of these out. Maybe work them into a one shot here and there. Um, we'll get a little better review on what it is, but so far I like the layout. I like the idea. Um, I don't need a huge railroaded game uh, every single time D and D puts out a book. We enjoyed Tales of the Yawning Portal, uh, and again, I think the best. Did we though? Did we? <laughs> Somebody did. <laughs> Somebody enjoyed killing us. We did lose a lot of people at that. That's a whole other tangent. We really did, yeah. Um, but I, I would say that I, I still would like to, you know, it, it's going to be a passion project, but I would like to take all the campaigns and create just a story and just drop people off into town and wherever they end up is the campaign we're playing and just not tell anybody we're playing by books and we'll just weave out the entire anthology of what they've got for Forgotten Realms and you go north, you run into giants, you go south, you run into Cholt, you go, you know, west, you know, you're dealing with some Candlekeep mysteries. I mean, it is what it is, so... A good book, yeah. good price point. I mean, I think it was 30 bucks on D&D Beyond for me uh, and for 16 adventures and actually seeing something of a little bit higher level. Um, I'm curious to see, again, I, I want to see what D&D or at least the creators say, this is what a 16th to 20th level campaign looks like because they haven't touched it. And I'm guessing is because it's just not balanced when you get wizards that high. But I, yeah. I want to see. Meteor Swarm comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. You get, Kim, you said, yeah. Kim, you said you bought the original copy of the book, correct? Yeah, I've got it sitting back there on my side table on top of my copy of Way of Kings, which I still haven't finished. Um, but I'm really excited for it only because I follow and know a bunch of the people that worked on it, a bunch of the writers for it on Twitter. And it's one of those things where usually I do all my own homebrew. I don't, you know, pick adventures, but I was like, but... I have a bunch of people I know who worked on it, so that made it cooler, and it made me want to get it more, because I was like, I'm supporting their writing. Um, 
and plus the fact that it's just such a diverse team as well. I mean, even and like you know, out towards May with Van Richten's coming out, I pre-ordered that because I was like, Dad, I want. Um, but no, I'm I'm excited. I was looking through some of the adventures. It looks really fun. And for me, kind of like what you were getting at, Nolan, is like, I like the idea of going to an ancient library and trying to find the mysteries that are in the library. Like, I built a class on DMs Guild called the Expeditionary. It's got six subclasses where the whole point is you are, because like, the idea is that players are explorers, but there's nothing that specializes them. So I built the Expeditionary for stuff like Candlekeep without sort of realizing it because we didn't know Candlekeep was going to come out when I built it. And it's just that kind of that mystery, that sleuthing, the exploration. I always have more fun with that than massive boss fights. So uh, I'm excited. I'm going to read through it and maybe throw some into my next uh, game because I'm running a throne. That, I'm running a game set in Eldraine. Uh, and I think that'll be a perfect place to rework some of it. Nice. Very nice. Yep. So Candle Keep Mysteries is out in the wild. You can, of course, get it on D&D Beyond as well as your local game store. If you don't have a local game store, obviously you can go to the major outlets and pick it up. Uh, Walmart, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, things like that. Uh, we always recommend you support your local game store first. Uh, we do have an official gameplay trailer for Dark Alliance. Nolan, what can you tell us about this? Uh, I have mixed reviews on it. I'm excited for the game. I love Dark Alliance. I thought the trailer was super hokey uh <laughs> i i i don't know who they were trying to appeal to with the trailer and the music um it did not necessarily adult terminology but like uh teen 14 terminology uh you know talking about kicking ass and slaying hordes and i was just like i don't know um i'm excited to play it the game looks pretty good like just from what they give you it's hard to say till you actually feel it i mean if it's smooth and that kind of stuff there but again i i'm excited for the adventures it looks like it's basically taking place after the crystal shard uh and a people are not so nice people are searching what happened to it so waves of enemies and monsters and craziness are coming to the north and seek of a powerful artifact and it's up to you and the the, the what is it the companions of the hall to uh, stop mm -hmm. them um they have uh dritzt is a classified as a rogue uh which i think is probably a okay route to go even though you're going to make some people mad with it uh, Caterbury is a ranger which mm -hmm. is also an area that i think you might make people upset um wolfgar looked pretty awesome brunner looked pretty awesome so i i'm hoping it's gonna be good it, it looks smooth i like hack and slashes i mean i'm a, I'm a fan for loot and diablo look like you could level up gear so and it'll change on your character appearance so you get a helmet it changes which i think is great that's always nice to see uh, the evolution so it's not just hey numbers are bigger um i i'm excited i'll play it uh totally i'm gonna play it but so so i i have to mention because only because you mentioned the crystal shard and and i'm sure the majority of the people who listen to this show know what the crystal shard is but just in case we get that one person who is no idea the crystal shard was written by r.a salvatore and it is it, not timeline wise and no one correct me if i'm wrong but it is actually the first driz Jordan book um not timeline wise mind you because he goes back and does some like prequel stuff but that was the icewind dale trilogy the very first book that that we saw about Drizzt Jordan and his friends, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, just wanted to make sure I had that right because somebody's going to be like, no, you're wrong. So I figured I better just clear it and make sure. The other thing about this game that I'm excited for is that it's in third person, which yep. means Patrick can play it. <laughs> because, yeah. Cam, just so you know, I get sick when I play first person games. I like, unless I take a buttload of Dramamine. I can't play them. They just make me horribly sick. So we talk about all these games that are coming out, and Nolan's like, yeah, it's in first person. I'm like, well, so much for that. Um, so I'm excited about that. Cameron, how about you? Are you excited for Dark Alliance? I don't know. I I, I saw the trailer, and I don't, I'm not a big Forgotten Realms guy um, just because so many... My group back home are like the, the two guys who used to run games before I started doing the majority of games um they're my brother's age so they're you know 21 now but they grew up on like 2e first edition because that's what their dad taught them to play and they were huge like grits fans and i mean i don't mind the books but like for me it was dragonlance that got me into these you know i've got 
original copies that I found for like two bucks at a flea market. And then I looked and they're like, oh, they're $40 again. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Dra Dragonlance is more my dealio. I mean, my biggest thing is just if I was to get a D&D &D video game, I'd want it to be more like D&D &D and, you know, more freeform, more sandboxy, you know, plop it on whatever, you know, setting you want. But I think it's like with Baldur's Gate, you know, I have a couple of buddies that play it a lot. And they're like, oh, it's, you know, only got this set stuff and it's only this set stuff. And I'm like, eh. I mean, I, to every anyone who wants to play it, like, Austin, you, I just for me, the reason I like D&D is the, <laughs> the sandbox, the freeform. I don't sure. like structure. <laughs> Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, this is very much a Diablo clone. I mean, it's designed. It's a uh, it's a hack and slash and a theme world. It's not D and D. It's just D and D themed. Um, and I can see what you're saying too. I mean, I think we grew up with uh, some Baldur's Gate action as well, uh, telling the story, being on the campaign, uh, turn based systems, actually seeing the spells that you're used to. So, I, I'm excited for Baldur's Gate three. Uh, I know it is an alpha right now, so or beta. So that's that's kind of tough. But that'll be probably a little closer to what you're looking at. But yeah, it's it's definitely uh, I don't know. It, it it goes back to like what they did with fourth edition, right? With fourth edition, they were trying to cater to the World of Warcraft kids by by having encounter abilities and that kind of stuff. So to me, this kind of looks like uh, like when we're bringing magic into or Lord of the Rings into the magic or that kind of stuff. Like we're we're getting it's going to be themed stuff. It's not going to somebody's going to play this and be like, oh, I got to play D and D. It's not going to be the same form most likely because they're going to be used to. So when do I slaughter everything? And, It'll be interesting to see what who brings it in. So, yeah. So I still enjoy it, Ori. I still enjoy. It. That's where I wet my teeth. Fair <laughs> enough. So the standard <laughs> edition of the game will be priced at thirty nine ninety nine. There's also going to be a digital deluxe edition of the game priced at fifty nine ninety nine. It does look like the digital digital deluxe. Wow, there's that mouthful again. The digital deluxe version will get you access to Echoes of the Blood War expansion. I gotta admit, I, I think it looks pretty fun. I do agree with Cameron in that I do like if I'm gonna play a DD &D role playing game, I do like it to be a little bit more open world. However, in the case of just sitting down, playing for a few minutes, and having the DD &D feel to it, the DD &D theme to it, I'm okay with that. So I'll probably end up picking this one up mostly because it's in third person and I can actually play it. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Steam, and Xbox X. So it looked like it'll be across all platforms. I didn't see anything on. Uh, cross platform play or anything like that yet, but I don't know. Good fun hack and slash, hit some combos, yeah. mashing buttons, pick up some loot, and uh, yeah, go about your life. So, that is all the news I saw for DD. Did either of you see anything else that I'm missing? I Perfect. Didn't. Let's hop over to Onyx Path, and this will be really quick here. Uh, with the campaign for Victorian Age Mage about to wrap up, Onyx Path has announced their next Kickstarter. This time it's going to be Trinity Continuum Adventure. Cameron, are you a Trinity Continuum player? I am not. I've reviewed a lot of Onyx Path stuff. I actually had um, Eddie Webb on my show a little while ago to talk about uh, Pugmire. Like in, my brother and I love Pugmire. Um, just because we're both dog people, and it's just stupid, ridiculous, and fun. But uh, as far as other Onyx Path stuff, I've played some Vampire, uh, but I'm not super, super informed. Sure, sure. And, and, you know, and that's neither Nolan and I play Trinity either. We know of it. Uh, that's really about the extent of our knowledge of it. So I, I, do, I did see in the project status updates that there is a little bit of movement in some of the projects. Some things are slowly starting to work through the ice field that is their their project list still no shipping on cults of the blood gods yet which come on man oh did we just lose craig probably we did we'll just keep going so nothing from cults of the blood gods yet uh, which is unfortunate i'm really waiting I, i'm excited for that book to ship uh it's been a long time uh, that's that's about it for monix path not a whole lot of news this week which is great that means more time for cam <laughs> so <laughs> let's hop over to Modivius. They did announce uh, a free PDF for Star Trek Adventures Klingon Quick Start. Uh, just pulled straight from the uh, press release. It says this is a free 37 page Klingon Quick Start for Star Trek Adventures role playing. Uh, provides a summary of the key rules needed to play through the Quick Start adventure. The adventure, the tip of the Batleth, is six and six pre generated Klingon Warrior player characters all ready for your game group to use to battle for glory and honor. 
You will also need at least two 20-sided dice per player, several six-sided dice to serve as challenge dice, a set of chips or tokens for momentum, and at least 20 chips or tokens for threat. Uh, the pre-generated pre characters found in the back of the booklet, of course, you will also need. Now, ready your disruptors and bat lists, download the quick start adventure, gather your friends, and enter Star Trek Adventures from the Klingon point of view. Kapla. All right. Has, I know Nolan has. And Cameron, are you a Star Trek fan? Not Star Trek, but I do love Modiphius. Um, okay. I talked with Chris Birch a couple, I think, last, last season. Um, I've got their Infinity RPG. I've got the Conan RPG. I've got the John Carter RPG. And I got Dishonored for Christmas. Uh, so, uh, you can call me a fan. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, so yeah, that is available on Drive Through RPG. So if you're a fan of uh, Star Trek Adventures, which that is a game that I de definitely want to play because I love Star Trek, all iterations of Star Trek. So this game has me. Like, I, I've bought a couple of books with the hope that one day we'll play it. Which I mean, I have a bookshelf full of books with the hope that one day we'll play them. <laughs> True. I don't think you can call yourself a true RPG nerd if yeah, exactly. you don't have that. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it is available on Drive Through RPG. I do have a link in the show notes. So if you wanted to check that out, uh, go ahead and grab yourself a free copy. I didn't see a whole lot else in the news. I mean, just not a lot going on right now. And Nolan, am I missing anything? I didn't see a lot either. It was fairly quiet. Um, nothing, at least uh, groundbreaking and earth shattering. So. Cameron, how about you? Is there any news that you'd like to share with us that are, is RPG related, not related to your project? I mean, nothing I can think of off the top of my head, other than the fact that I was just scrolling through and I had remembered that uh, Magic is doing a Warhammer 40k set. Yes, uh, they are. It'll be commander point, based. Which uh, I'm gonna buy just for the meme, <laughs> just to, like ah yes, I put down my. Uh, four white <laughs> starties to uh, attack you just because it's yeah. so ridiculous. So That's from what we've seen about that is that it's going to be five decks, uh, all Warhammer 40k themed. And I, I, I do have some speculations about what those decks are going to be. Um, and, and eventually I'll do a show just me talking about what I think these decks are going to be. I think that is scheduled to come out fall 2022. For the for the commander cycle, uh, I know that this fall the magic set is going to be the adventures in the forgotten realms. Oh, that's right. I forgot about yep. that. And then next spring we should be getting the Lord of the Rings set, which, I, as like I was telling my wife, you know, I picked up some Time Spiral remastered this weekend, mostly just because it's Time Spiral remastered. There's a couple of foils in the set that I need for my ad nauseum deck, but I didn't, re you know, it's not like I was counting on getting them. Um, however, she's like, well. Are you going to keep buying? I'm like, no, I'm saving my money for Lord of the Rings and Forgotten Realms. <laughs> it's like, because I'll probably end up buying multiple boxes of both of those so I can have complete sets. And, it, it, and even then, um, it, it's mostly going to be just because of what they are and the collectability of them. And it's just like the Warhammer stuff. I'll end up buying each of those just to put them away. So, yeah, uh, I... Looking forward to the 40K stuff. All right, so that is going to be our new section for this week. 